training and getting ready for this next match, a doubles match. Can the USA win another point back and close that gap on Europe? Let's head over once again to Cass Edwards and Simon Golding. Thanks, Tony. Our second Scotch doubles of three in this afternoon's session. And Cass Edwards, just a, a quick reminder what this doubles format is all about. Thank you, Simon. Yes, yeah, Scotch doubles. Um, two players, obviously, one player will, will lead. And if he doesn't strike, um, he stands up first again next time. The second player has to take the spare. So consequently, it's a, a kind of interesting match. And strikes really what both sides need. It's a bit of a game of two halves. We've got a, a group of players that so far haven't featured in this afternoon's session, including both the uh, American captain there, Tommy Jones, in the red and in the blue, the European captain, Dominic Barretts, and out on a, a fresh lane, but it's still the same oil pan, Cass. 37 feet of freshly laid oil. These uh, couple of guys are just going through a practice ball apiece before they start, but it's 37 feet of new oil, which leaves 23 feet of dry back end. That's where the oil tapers off and stops. And then the dry part of the lane up to the head pin is where all the action takes place, where all the high scores are made. The ball reaction turns up and hopefully drives those pins out. So Martin Larsen from Sweden will be bowling alongside his captain Dominic Barrett. On paper, that is a very, very good team indeed. Up against the man that is struggling once again at a Weber Cup. Bill O'Neill has had a torrid time of it so far. And Tommy Jones, cast by his own admission, didn't bowl well yesterday. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, the side of Mr. 300 at his best. And as you say, Bill O'Neill's had a bit of a horror story so far, but they've doubled up now together and hopefully uh, be looking to change the uh, way things have been going. A chance just to uh, have a look at the pattern, have uh, an opportunity to make those final decisions on the ball. And they are big decisions if you get off to a poor start in these, these uh, one-game matches, which are effectively a sprint, you can put yourself in a lot of trouble straight away. So, Don Barrett. Looking to get this one off to a strong start. We've, also, we've already seen how well uh, Martin Larson played on yesterday's oil pattern. Dominic started a little bit slowly, but he, he said, I was talking to him last night, he said that was all about the fact that he, he just had so many things on his mind, getting the team ready, getting the team into action, that he didn't concentrate enough on his own game. And when it came to the captain's pick, his team said, look, God, just, just forget about it, just play. And that's what he did to bring home the point. He starts with a shot that he would uh, dearly like to have back. He's a lucky man just to leave a single pin. Yeah, single four pin, not a bad looking shot as openers go. Hard and fast, but a lot of reaction in the back end there. This is seven pin. That's Martin Larson steps up to make this spare, which is Scotch, what Scotch doubles is all about. And that's hard and fast and takes the spare away nicely in the first frame. So, solid enough, just keep the frames clean, keep closing them out, make sure you don't leave any spares for an open, and uh, that should keep the score ticking along nicely, and then you're looking to group those strikes together if you can. The real deal, he's called over in the USA, 33-year-old Bill O'Neill. You don't win a major if you're not quality, and this man has a major in the kit bag. But he does have a problem with the Weather Cup format. And for all his brilliance, Cass, he just doesn't seem to be able to settle here in Barnsley. Yeah, slightly wayward shot here, very light on the head pin. I've got a feeling he's using a urethane ball, which is a harder surface, not, cuts down the, the hook. Uh, it didn't hook enough to make the head pin properly, and it leaves Jones to stand up and shoot the spare. But I mean, certainly has been struggling in the Weber Cup, and not just this year. He really needs to get something going. So it's a spare each to start with. TJ, just like Dominic Barrett, asked to take on the mantle of captaincy this year. Two great friends, Mika Koivinyemi for Europe and uh, the man they call Superman, Chris Barnes, the former captains, having to step that down for this year for uh, various reasons. Mika, due to coaching, over in uh, the Middle East, and from Chris Barnes' point of view, back surgery 
finally caught up with him and uh, had to have that sorted out in the last few weeks. Dominic Barrett Cass has stepped into this captaincy role like he was born to it. Well, yeah, back to water. And this is a great looking shot, a reaction in the back end off that bowling ball. Very high revs, he hits the 1-3 pocket, which is what we call the sweet spot for the right-hander. Sets up that chain reaction and kills all the pins dead. O'Neill sticking with the same ball. He wasn't far off on the last throw. And that's nicely done. You can see how far right he's gone. So he's just letting it guide into, drift into the pocket. Yeah, certainly more of a curve ball with that European surface ball. Not so much snap in the back end as with a, a resin reactive ball. Just settle the nerves. That means that both TJ and this man, Martin Larson, will get to throw the strike ball in the next frame. 36 year old Swede from Gothenburg. Three hundreds to his name, that one a little bit wide, and never made it back, and that's the problem that Larson will have on the fresh oil. Yeah, this is it. Uh, so it is fresh oil, and he's just realised that he's either got the wrong ball there or he's both too wide. It just hasn't come back at all. Larson's the only man of the eight players that hasn't won a PBA title in the United States. His uh, record is, is much better in Europe and around the world and on the Asian tour. But certainly um, has earned a spot in the European Rubber Cup side. Oh, lucky to Barrett. And that's an open frame and a worrying open frame for Team Europe. I wonder if Parker Bone has managed to wrestle the momentum back. Yes, unusually an open frame there from Don Barrett. He had to make that spare. And to all intents and purposes, it looks as though it was going to be covered. He's just chopped uh, one of the pins out. Go bone with that uh, singles win in match nine, putting a point on the board. And that means that uh, Team Europe and Team USA can just breathe a little easier as they come into this one. So Jones, the 36-year-old from South Carolina, he too using the hard ball. Man that had such a fabulous time of it uh, around about eight nine years ago. He was virtually unstoppable on the PBA, but hip injury, knee injury caught up with him. It hasn't really ever hit the heights since that point, but still consistently winning big tournaments, Cass, when it's uh, required. It certainly is, yes. He's uh, done some damage in the Weber Cup in the years past, but he's also had several large wins uh, on the Asian Tour, and Tokyo and Japan as a has well. He's had four huge victories in tournaments over the last few years. So he certainly makes his mark on the world stage. So the difference between the two teams, as we hit uh, frame four, is that open frame for Team Europe. The 12-pin difference accounting for that. Now Larson looks like he's staying with the same ball. So it was line the problem. And he sorts it out so quickly. And that's what the champions do. That's how you put food on the table when you're a pro sportsman you make those changes and you make them count and just a slight adjustment as you were indicating and it, the reaction is 100 uh, percent isn't it it is that harder surface cover stop ball doesn't hook quite so much and that's what they're looking for at this moment with this lane pattern a straighter line to the pocket not looking to hook too far jones unusually puts his thumb in the ball first and the fingers go in afterwards. It's normally the other way around with most uh, top bowlers. Through the head pin was always going to be a problem. 3 6 10 left. Yeah, it's certainly not a good shot from Jones. The two playing the straighter line, hoping that it's just going to hold pocket, but snaps in the back end at uh, 23 feet of dry lane. And where the oil ends up to the head pin, that's where the, the action takes place. That's a decent spare, and it is from Bill O'Neill. Yeah, just looked a little bit wide. It's going to do his confidence good, but. Uh... <laughs> he's having a laugh and a joke with Wes Malott and uh, his other teammate, Parker Bone. You thought I was going to miss it, he said. 
Never in doubt. One pin in it then. Europe back to uh, a marginal advantage. But both Barrett and Larson have thrown strikes. And what is key in both the Scotch doubles and the Baker, the team format, it's the two strikes in a row. If you can double it up at any point during those frames, you have a chance. Well, yeah, it's all bonus pins that, uh, on the count back. Oh, what's going to happen? Dear, oh dear, Don. Again, a little bit fortunate with just leaving the single. That was nearly exactly the same leave as the USA. Well, it was the opportunity. Don was working on a strike, so he was looking for the two in a row. Mm -hmm. Left three pin standing, two have fallen over, so it's a simple, straightforward single pin spare for Martin Larson. You can see the oil track on his bowling ball. Just shows you how much oil there is actually on this lane. Although the players can't see it, and viewers at home can't see it either. So it's kind of hit and miss. It's all to do with the ball reaction that the players see as to where they throw that ball. So chances here. So look for Tommy Jones just popping that thumb in first. In it goes, screws it right in. Yeah, nice tight was... fit, isn't it, with the thumb insert? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Most most top players put the fingers in first and then ease the thumb in afterwards because it's the thumb that comes out first, out of the ball. That's a great looking shot. That's straight. They've got a better reaction in the back end from Tommy Jones that time. Strike number two for the Americans. Just a spring on the American skipper's step there. Yeah, double hit on the five pin, which nearly stood up. That's so all ten. Barrett couldn't throw the strike in the last frame, so according to the rules of Scotch doubles, that means he has to step up again. And that becomes a problem for the man in the chair. Larson sitting down for a while. That's a nice ball for a strike, and uh, I think we're heading for another tight finish here. Well, it certainly is at the halfway stage. A better looking shot from Barrett to uh, give it a bit more width. Well, the action in the back end carried all ten. So it will be Larson to stand up and uh, shoot the strike ball next time. O'Neill working on a strike and he desperately needs one here. Give the Americans two strikes in a row. He's the man with all the pressure on his shoulders. And I'm afraid that one just never made it to the pocket with any kind of impetus and a huge split left. Played the wide outside line with the harder ball, not so much hook. Well, he didn't get any hook at all, and consequently no drive through the pin deck. The four pin jumps around the seven, and the six jumps around the ten, and they both stand up. But he doesn't care, because Tommy Jones, Tommy Jones has got to try and spare this. More than likely, an open frame. It is. Oh dear, again for the USA, not the first time, and maybe not the last time we say that during the course of Weather Cup 16. So Europe once again jump into that potential maximum lead at 2-3-8 if they strike it off the card from here. But they won't be thinking about that, they'll be thinking double. Two strikes in a row, that's gold dust right now. And Larson with the same ball, threw a strike with it a little earlier. Can he throw another here to back up Don Barrett? Looks good. It is good. Larson goes down on one knee to punch the air. It's a double. Just what you were talking about, Simon. There's been several opportunities to, for the players to make doubles, and Larson is the first one down on one knee. Lucky man, lucky Larson. Two strikes in a row for the Europeans. Just those little glimpses of emotion. I know it's still relatively early doors here at Weber Cup 16. Those little bits of emotion show you how much this means to the players on both sides. Nicely done, that was the ball that he was trying to throw last time round and it keeps the pressure on. Does it give uh, Jones an opportunity to stand up and shoot a full rack of 10 pins next time? There is a difference in the score, it's 13 pins. And Don Barrett stands up with two strikes in a row sitting behind him. On the European scorecard. But one step at a time. The next step, looking for three strikes in a row. He's actually using the ball 
that Stuart Williams used yesterday in his singles and uh, felt that it reacted well with the lane. So Barrett's giving it a go. And he's giving it a go to great success. Three in a row. Puts Europe in the driving seat now. A great looking shot from uh, Don Barrett. Held pocket beautifully, right in the one, two pocket. It's the one, three, five, and the nine pin. And that sets up that chain reaction they're looking for. Three strikes in a row. And maintains the lead for Team Europe. TJ missed a 300 then. To step up next, he'll be in action in the singles against Martin Larson, which is match 11. A strike to stay in the uh, in the game, I think. And there's the full start, which occasionally we've seen from Tommy Jones before. I think he gets a little bit, some sort of movement, perhaps in his fingers and his thumb. It just maybe just slides out on a bit of perspiration. But he's done the right thing. He's stopped and regrouped. And this is what elite players can do. They can pull out right in the middle of the process. Most of us would have let that ball go still, and it would have been horrible. But Jones knew that everything wasn't quite as he wanted it to be. And able to process those thoughts very quickly, stop the action and restart. And as Cass says, back to the process. It's not just pick it up and go again. You have to start the whole thing again. Let's see if it's worth the wait for Team USA. It's almost a must-strike situation to make two in a row. He's got it. It held its line, Cass. I was a little fearful at one point for that ball. We're so used to seeing Tommy Jones hook the ball all over the lane, coast to coast. This one was a pretty straight shot, and as you say, held line, held the pocket, carried all ten. Absolutely perfect. What it does is it just forces Martin Larson into a situation where, situation where he must now strike in the foundation frame. Anything less, and USA will have opportunities once again. This then for a four-bagger for Team Europe. Oh, no. And that 10 was pretty solid. That'll hurt because there was not a lot wrong with that throw. It's uh, such a shame, yeah, a good-looking shot like this. And you think, well, there's 10, that's going to be a strike. On the slow-mo, you can see it's slightly light in the pocket. And the six is laid in the gutter. Leaves the 10 pin standing, so that can only be a spare which Don Barrett has to take. And look at the scores. Makes a big, big difference. Some spare a must here. But USA now back in a winning position. Yeah, they certainly are. If uh, Bill O'Neill can shoot a strike here in the foundation frame, frame nine. It's very interesting to see that these uh, three of these guys are, are bowling, Eurofane bowling balls. It's uh, something that Guy Kaminsky may pick up later and explain fully, but uh, they're looking to cut down on the amount of hook and play a much straighter line to the pocket. Oh, he knew that. He knew that that was a poor throw. And you heard a, a squeal of anguish from Bill O'Neill. Around about there, he knew that was gone. I would suggest that this game is all over because that is the 4-6 and the 7-10 split, the big split. He cannot believe what's left. Tommy Jones has got to bowl at it and try and spare it, and unfortunately this is likely to be an open frame. This is a 100-1 to one shot that he could spare this, and it's the foundation frame as well. And look at the USA's maximum score, 201. Oh, he gave it a go, he really did. But it's tough to get it off that kick back into the other pins. Happens now and again, it has happened on TV over the years, but not on this occasion for Tommy Jones. And once again in this afternoon session, the USA are going to be sub 200 as their final score. Not over yet, but Larson with a golden opportunity here to put this one to bed. Just hit some pins and it's all over. And oh, he's left know. the big one. Oh, my goodness me. Not quite the same split as the States, but that's not good. Actually, Simon, yeah, no, uh, 
calculators are melting that. It is good enough. It doesn't matter if it's an open frame. They have enough pins. Athens can only hit 187. So you're saying that the Team Europe fans can relax. Yeah, take a deep breath and look at the score sheet and see it's enough. Not the highest game, but it's 193 it will be a win. As you can see, the Team Europe uh, players celebrate, and unfortunately, Bill O'Neill stands up again. To look defeat in the face. The uh, fans are going to help him through this one. Well, O'Neill will be feeling it once again because if you trace back through the frames, but I'm afraid there's a couple of shots in there that caused the real problem for this American team. And the crowd here in Barnsley. Once again, treated to uh, a European point. And the Americans now just talking and talking and talking about this. They're, they're trying to glean as much information as they can, exchange as many ideas as they can. Yeah, well, but you could kind of say that they're all at sea. Tell me, just uh, as captain discussing, well, he's, he wants another ball brought in just to have a practice shot. Yeah, you can see the, uh, that little tube there is the thumb insert that goes into the ball. It's also got the tape inside it as well, which gives him the snug fit. He screws that into the ball and then he's ready to go. And uh, very much a different ball. And he's thinking about singles, isn't he, here? Yeah, he's up next. This is just a practice shot. And if he had 12 of those, we'd be uh, very happy because we'd have another 300 game. But the 7-10 split and the 4-6-7-10 split in this game. Both unfortunately left by this man, Bill O'Neill. Let's cost him the point. Seven two turns to eight two in favour of Team Europe. This has been another amazing session for Dominic Barrett and his men. And in the latest match, that Scotch doubles, let's be honest, it wasn't good, but it was good enough. 193 beats 187. Barrett and Larson beat O'Neill and Jones, and Team Europe move to a six-point advantage in Weber Cup 16.